Thank you all. Uh, I uh, just have a couple framing remarks. We're doing a number of things that are a little bit different in this session than we have in prior workshops. So I wanted to give you a little bit of context of where this workshop fits in our larger agenda and what we have in, plan in store for you all today. Kamani, can we switch the, oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so, so the, um, the, the, Sandy mentioned, within the structure of the roundtable, there's an ongoing working group devoted to resources. There's been another one focused on policy and relationships. Um, the, uh, the group on resources, is that working? The clicker on, would seem to be on. Why don't you click it? <laughs> uh, so we began with a very clear, unequivocal imperative. Um, to get better results, we're going to have to invest differently. There have been landmark <laughs> statements on this, including from the National Academies, the uh, for the public's health, investing for a healthier future, has in 2012 sort of established this very clear stance that resources matter both to individuals and to the investments that um, are capable of advancing health program policy and, and practices. Um, so our focus within this work has been to uh, sort of think about the conditions under which it's possible to alter economic incentives and shift the flow of, of resources. Our work within the roundtable it's pretty simple. It's been organized around three basic elements to explain the terrain of what is ordinarily a very complicated and, um, and, and sort of foreboding area of financing and investment, resource allocation. Uh, if, if we as health professionals, as concerned citizens, don't see it within our um, sort of realm of influence to shape these investment choices, it's going to be incre you know, sort of very hard to ever achieve this imperative. Um, so one of the goals of this workshop and this larger line of work is to make this whole area more understandable and accessible. Um, and so that's job one of this workshop is if, if you feel confused, ask. If you want clarification for where you are in the universe, ask. This is a working workshop and understanding the terrain is item one. Um, we also want to elevate exemplars. You'll see throughout the day that that uh, there are sort of Hall of Fame elements within the field of shaping tax policy. We want to talk about those historical foundations and also think about what more could be done going forward. So we want to lift up exemplars. And then lastly, we want to uh, sort of <coughs> enhance our fiscal fluency, be able to understand the structures and some of the facts and figures about what, is, um, what matters in this sphere of health policy and, and tax policy. Kamani, did we lose the, the image here? Or is it, is it a source thing? The next, the next image is a useful image because it's, it's a, <laughs> imagine, imagine for yourselves uh, a product of our last October workshop. One more step. I see it, but they need to see it. Halfway home here. Uh, back in October 2016, right? Uh, Uh, we had a workshop on, uh, on the, uh, building the financial structures for uh, population health. And, and within that, one of the products was a menu of, of uh, sort of major sources of, of financing streams. Uh, they were divided into what you normally think of as uh, short-term seed funding or working capital around grants and bonds and loans. and other kind of pay-for-success contracts, the field has been largely focused and dependent on a lot of these um, foundational elements of financing. None of those would, are necessarily known for their dependability, their long-term sustainability. So we fleshed out a deeper part of the menu that looks at uh, issues of how healthcare payment reform are changing and the new patterns of reimbursement, the prospect of reinvesting savings in one area to then generate inflow of resources to um, area, other areas of a portfolio that are important but not being um, fully invested in, um, to the roles of anchor institutions and uh, public appropriations and mandates and even the power of, of private markets. Um, on that list was a focus on public revenues, taxes and tax credits. So one of a large menu um, is going to become our entire spotlight of today. And this is 
part by design. We are trying to move through a consistent line of inquiry around what is the financing landscape. And so today is a deeper dive into one part of a 10-part menu, which we can, if we can ever get you to see it, <laughs> you'll, you'll know that it exists. But, but uh, suffice it to say that, that that's there. Um, so the next step is really important because it's a poll. So I'm going to trust that our technicians are going to get this working. While all of you, you normally at these meetings, they say, put away your cell phones. No, 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 no. <laughs> Take out your cell phones and go to pollev.com slash pophealth. Okay, pollev.com slash pophealth. And uh, I'm, I'm looking with intent on our team who's going to make this happen. Faulty bulb. Wow, okay. That's interesting. Can, can, can folks see this on that screen and this screen? You just can't see it on these screens. And can people online see this as well? Yeah, they could probably see what's on these screens. Super, okay. Uh, so, the only, so let's go to the next slide, Kimani. And, um, and this, uh, this question of what do we know as a field about, about a very important interface, the interface between how we design tax policy and the effects on uh, sort of population health and well-being. So this is a question about expertise. How much expertise do you individually feel in designing tax policies to enhance pop health and well-being? Uh, it's, it's sort of a, a personal check about your perception of expertise. Anywhere from beginner, or basic, intermediate, proficient, expert, this is, this is your area. Um, so if we go to pop health, oh, excuse me, pollev.com slash pop health, and you should be able to see this poll and register your own view of your own expertise. Are folks seeing this poll? Yeah, there should be a little thing at the bottom. Oh, well, sorry. If, it's, if you see clear, then you've submitted it. Uh, I can't see what that's doing, though. What's this thing? What's going on there? What's happening there? It's okay. If you, if you see clear, then you have submitted it. Our challenge is this, which, believe it or not, we tested this fully. <laughs> if, if we can't get the electrons to work, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way here in the room. But Yeah, it looks like a Wi-Fi problem. Come on in. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're going to go for a quickie show of hands. How many people, how many people went for the full trifecta, you're an expert? Any experts in this room? Pete's an expert. That, that's good news. That's good news because you're going to hear from Pete next. <laughs> uh, we don't even need to do the rest of this poll, honestly, because there, there is very few experts on this topic. We are dealing with an area, of, a frontier of the field, where there really is no profound experts. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Live results. It's just like election night, right? We are a room of beginners and basics, right? And very, Pete didn't even vote. Wait a minute. What kind of expert are you? <laughs> That's how it works. The people in power don't even tell us. Uh, right. So that's the good news. This, this workshop is not designed to make any of us expert. It, this is neither a time to necessarily listen to experts lecture. This is a time to build confidence. So let's go to the next poll, at lex, next and last. Uh, instead of sort of aspiring to achieve expertise, now the question is, how much confidence do you have? Go back one slide. Let's see if this works. A for effort. Uh, how much confidence do you have that you could be uh, an effective proponent for sound tax policy to shape population health and health equity? This is about confidence. That's right. Well, advocate is not a bad word. If another internet connection lost, really. You're still in the expertise poll. Yeah, we, we will go to the show of hands if you can't. Is, is it it's an internet problem here? Oh, crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right. So the 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 scale here, <laughs> the scale here is is about confidence that you may be 
coming in this room with a phobia to this topic, like, hey, I, <laughs> I have below, you know, beginner confidence in this, or I'm willing to learn, or this is my strike zone, and even if I'm not an expert, this is an area that I have very, you know, high confidence that I'm going to make a difference in this. So even if we reduce this poll to those three big topics, uh, a show of hands, how many people honestly come in with like, Ooh, this is not my topic, and I'm, I'm a little nervous about this, right? It's like about a third. If you're really honest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to elevate that by 10%, because, <laughs> because people who are phobic generally don't raise their hand in a big room. Uh, how many people are, are like, yeah, I'm willing to learn if this, it, it, well, I'm giving you those three. I'm giving you those three. So, so anxiety, number one, I'm willing to learn, but I just don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just starting on this work. How many people feel it? Most of us. Um, and, and how many people, this is your strike zone. Even if you're not an expert, it's going to be an area that you specialize in, right? Almost one at every table, which that's nice to know, right? Um, this workshop is designed for you, and it's designed to be able to, um, to combine uh, perspectives across those areas and, and, um, and sort of as, you know, in one day to try to elevate our collective sense that this is an area that we can influence. Um, okay, so that's our goals. The objectives, uh, good news, you don't need slides for these. In your materials, there are, well, there we go. <laughs> uh, we have three objectives, and these parallel kind of the broad, uh, the broad focus that we've been talking about, right? We want to explain this terrain in ways that help you understand what has been done and what might be done next. We want to lift up some, some example, examples of how tax policies have been used to, have been designed and used in the past. Um, and we want to equip us all to be more confident proponents of this work. Of this work. I won't belabor it. Um, let me just give you a quick uh, arc of the day in the agenda. In the next slide. Yeah. Um, so just so you feel it, uh, we've got the day divided into two big chunks before and after lunch. Um, next up is, uh, is, is a session intended to get into sort of tax policy 101. Uh, Pete Davis is a veteran. He's done this work for decades. He uh, is, is got stories to tell and will help us all think about the building blocks of what conversations in the U.S. around tax policy look like. Um, Nick Johnson is going to help with understanding the context of state budgets. Uh, a lot of times we think about tax policy, our minds go immediately to federal taxes, which matter, and our minds might be there <laughs> already coming in the room today. But the purpose is to think about the entire landscape of tax policies, so federal, state, local, all within, within view, and Nick Johnson is, is, uh, is well-positioned to give us a, a sense of that. Um, then comes a, sort of a two-part session. Kathy Gerwick will, will kick us off on thinking about how we shape uh, the incentives and create a pipeline of resources for population health purposes. Today's is not entirely devoted to all of the established science that says what good comes when we have resources. We've got plenty of evidence on that. Today is really on the inflow of capital to legitimate purposes. And we'll spotlight two things. One on the tax side of the ledger, right, the, the raising of resources, um, uh, notably through sin taxes, established ones on tobacco, and, and even emerging ones on sugar and carbon. So we've got uh, an impressive panel of speakers to think about what's being done on the tax side. And then on the other side are tax credits, things that lower your tax bill, but also shape economic incentives and opportunities to channel resources to purposes. So um, uh, Stacy Becker and a team of colleagues from Rethink Health will walk through the details on that. And then really a good chunk of the day is devoted to a small group exercise. Rose will kick it off about a fictional place, but anchored in very real predicaments you'll all recognize. Um, so we have this idea of Orlandia, who, who have a, uh, uh, an emerging focus on uh, portfolio of population health and resources devoted from a number of other actors, hospitals, philanthropy, businesses. The question is, how are the public, the, the citizens and the governments going to contribute into this sort of emerging portfolio? We imagine like a wellness trust or an accountable community of health that's forming. What would the basis of tax policy, how could tax policies be designed for Orlandia to channel capital into that? And you're all going to work at your tables in crafting proposals for the, the government of Orlandia. 
Um, and then we'll come back to the real world here and think about uh, what it takes to influence tax policy in the current environments. Alan Gilbert and Andy Biasi are in the throes of this work in their daily job and can give us a perspective on that. And then we'll close as we ordinarily do with insights from the day, thoughts about where this is going. Okay, everybody feel that? Okay, last two things I wanna say are um, you have a number of resources at your disposal in the materials with you. There's background papers written specifically for today. Uh, and and a, a uh, typology document. Is this in your handouts somewhere? If not, we're going to get it to you. It is. Good. Uh, Kimani, can you show this up real quick? There we go. Um, tax policy can be enormously complicated. Uh, and shaping it is even more complicated. For today, you, most of what matters for keeping oriented and located in the focus is on this one image. Right, a simple summary of tax policy on the left side are the things that raise your tax bill and generate revenue that the government has to allocate. And then on the right side are tax expenditures that lower your tax bill and by doing so shape economic incentives to a number of purposes. We're gonna have sessions that cover both of this. Your design choices can cover all of this. Um, this is your cheat sheet and your roadmap for the day. Um, and lest you think the tax policy is issue of experts deciding what to do. There is no such thing as tax policies that are not without judgments and trade-offs and controversy and principles behind these. Come on, can you? So there are going to be conversations that we need to have today about how effective these policies are, how predictable their flow of resources, how simple are they, how fair are they, other criteria that you're going to bring to the party. Um, so the last thing I'll say about this is, uh, and I alluded to this already, right? This workshop is not built. I mean, we, we, we uh, designed this workshop months ago, not necessarily knowing it was going to be at a moment of enormous uh, uh, you know, focus nationally uh, on our tax policy. But today's session is not about the particulars of legislation or the positions of certain parties um, and presidents. It's, it's really not even just about federal, as you've heard me say already, right? So we are going to focus, come on, you can get the next two items here. Um, so we're going to consider how to design these things. We're going to look in a way that transcends the legislative landscape for the moment. And, um, and we're going to be more comfortable with the controversy inherent in tax policy. Last image I'll leave you with is America was born on a tax dispute, <laughs> right? <laughs> this, is, this is part of what all people do when they try to become interdependent and economically interdependent. Um, so a lot of us are comfortable thinking about if, you know, if, if there were resources, what should they go to or what should they not go to? Commentary in population health science is often about the action agenda, and that's great. But we know enough now to say that action agenda doesn't mean very much if it's not backed by dependable resources, and that's going to mean um, at least turning our attention to these questions for today. So I will stop there, and Girder can come up and help us um, get going. Are there any questions of clarification about what we're getting into or what you want to get out of today um, as we transition. Everybody in for it? This is, this is your uh, six-hour cruise is about to begin. Uh, come on, you could just hit B on that.